Today we will be looking at a method of sections question from the 2014 HC paper. This type of question poses many problems to students, so this video will hopefully ignite that eureka moment, so let's go! Welcome to the second installment of Eureka Engineering HC Solutions. Today we'll pick up from where we left off and look at part 2 of question 22A 2014 HC paper. Now, this question asks us to determine the magnitude and nature of the forces in member BC and in DF. Now, to do that, we need to apply methods of section. But first, we need to draw the reaction forces and then calculate them. So, step one. Draw reaction forces and calculate them. So, we know that we have a force in the vertical direction, another force in the vertical direction, and another force in the vertical di direction, which is our unknown. And of course, the roller force, there's only one force, and that's going in the vertical direction. So, we can easily use here sum of forces in the y or vertical direction. So, sum of forces in the y direction equals zero. We've got 22.5 going up, so that's positive. 30 going down, which is negative, and EY going up positive equals zero. EY equals 7.5 kilo newtons. Now, as we said before, we need to use the methods of section to calculate the force in member BC. So I'm going to make a cut through member BC. So I'm going to cut it through member BC, and DF we can worry about later. Now, when you make a cut through the members, you instantly create forces. So the next step is to, well, the second step was to make a cut through the member in question. And step three, which is what we're about to do, is draw free body diagram. So I've cut it through here, so that's going to be a force here, BC. I've cut it through here, this will be a force BF, and there'll be a force here, AF. Now, when considering which side to take, left or right, usually we'd like to take the side where there's less amount of forces. So in this case, we'll consider the right-hand side. It's also much more easier and simpler than taking the left-hand side. So I'll draw my three-body diagram. So I've got BC, which is what we're after. BC, and then we have member CF, BF, AF, and then just complete the truss. There's D, E, don't forget to put your reaction force. So that's 7.5, and this was 30 degrees. Now, the next step is we have to consider which equation to use. We can either use sum of moments, sum of forces in the y direction, or sum of forces in the horizontal direction. Now, if we were to look at, if we were to use sum of forces in the y direction, this has no y direction or no vertical force. This has one and this has one as well. But these two are unknowns, hence we can't use sum of forces in the vertical direction. If we were to look at sum of forces in the horizontal direction, this one, this one, and this one all have, horizontal, all have horizontal forces, but those three are also unknowns. So the next equation to use is sum of moments. Now, by doing sum of moments around this point here, F, it eradicates this force and this force because it goes through the point, but this force we can use. Now, we need to break this force into its horizontal and vertical component, but for its vertical component, we don't need to use it because it goes through the point. Hence, it will not create a moment about point F. So instead, we will look at the horizontal force of BC. Okay? But first, before we break that out, before we break that up, we need to find this angle here. So by looking at the bigger picture, this here we know is a right angle, and this is a right angle. So this here will be 60 degrees, angle sum in a triangle. So this is 60, 
I'm going to break it up into its components. So there's your horizontal, there's your vertical, this is our right angle, this will be 30 degrees because it's a complementary angle. And remember that in complementary angles they add up to 90 degrees. Okay, now like I said, this horizontal component will create MOs, which means this force times this perpendicular distance. But we need to first find what CF is. So go back to the bigger diagram. We know that this is 7.5 because this member bisects this horizontal member. So this is 7.5, this is 7.5, and we can use our trig ratios. So we pretty much have this triangle here. So this is CF, this is 7.5, this is 30 degrees. So this is what I want, so I'll call that CF. Opposite on adjacent is tan. So tan 30 equals opposite, which is CF over 7.5. Therefore, CF equals 7.5 tan 30, which equals 4.33 meters. Okay, so now we know what the value of CF is, which is 4.33. Now the next step I need to do is figure out what the horizontal component of BC is. So this is the side that I'm interested in. This is adjacent, this is hypotenuse. So adjacent on hypotenuse is cos. So cos 30 equals, I'll call that H, horizontal, over its hypotenuse, which is BC. Therefore, H equals BC cos 30. Okay, so now we'll use the formula. So sum of moments about point F equals zero. And I consider anti-clockwise to be in my positive direction. So BC will create a force going this way in the anti-clockwise direction. So it will be BC cos 30. BC cos 30 times its perpendicular distance, which is CF, and we found that to be 4.33. So 4.33 plus this force times its distance, which we found out to be 7.5 here. So plus, because creating a moment around the point F, so it's going anti-clockwise, 7.5 times perpendicular distance, which is 7.5, and that equals zero. So do your algebra and you get BC to be 15 kilo newtons negative. Now, when you see a negative value, that means the direction that you assumed was incorrect. So what we do is we go back to our free body diagram and flip this direction. So now BC, therefore BC equals 15 kilo newtons. Instead of going that way, it's now going this way. So it's going that way. Now, the nature of this force is compression. Why? If the force is is the force, if the force is directed towards the joint, we call that compression. If it is directed away from the joint, it is tension. So therefore, this is compression. Now, the next thing they ask us to do is find the force in DF, in the member DF. Now, if you look at the member DF here, there are no forces. It's just a simple member. So DF equals zero kilo newtons and the nature of that is redundant it has no impact redundant so our step four will be So, which equation to use based on the amount of unknowns? Okay, so to wrap it up, first thing you do is you draw your reaction forces and then calculate those forces. So, you, in this case, we use some forces in the vertical direction or the y direction. And then we made a cut through member BC, because that's the, the member that we were interested in. And by making a cut, you develop or you introduce forces. So, you have a force at BC. Force in BF, force in AF. Uh, consider the right hand side. So draw your free body diagram and then consider how many unknowns we have and then use the appropriate uh, equation, which in this case was the sum of moments. Gets rid of these two forces, leaving you with one unknown. 
and this force which also creates MO. And from that you can calculate the value of BC. Now, with the nature, the force that goes towards the joint is compression, force that goes away from the joint it is tension. And with DF there is no force, hence it's zero and we call that a redundant force. And that should be it.